There's a lot of confusion out there right now about what a nanobot is. Because you go on the internet and research nanobot, and all you get are these glowing stories of the future of medicine and how nanobots are going to save our immune systems or whatever. Can you tell us more about what, what a nanobot is? Um, it's kind of a uh, easy term to use about the nanotechnology. So on a microscopic level, for some time now, we've been able to create um, synthetic we call it life. It's uh, like, it's more computer, it's more artificial intelligence, it has all these abilities. And it doesn't seem like we could possibly do it, but we can. So this is almost like, it's a, it's a synthetic structure that can act like a miniature robot, and we can do this. And it's so, what's happened is that our knowledge and technology has gone light years and we, the common people, have not been told about this. And so now we're really seeing what we can do with this new, these new vaccines, these injections, although they're not being forthright and honest with everybody about exactly what's in it or with the other medical professionals. So, um, with the scientific and business meetings I went to, I was introduced to what we can do with this technology, so it's why I know more about it. And you have to learn how to search with, uh, on the internet with certain keywords because we don't really have libraries anymore, just that. But I can tell you it's very, very difficult. And key research papers are hidden or buried, um, very hard to find anymore. So. What, te what that tells me is that people that control the internet or have influence over it control how you see history, they control how you see the world, they control what science is or what's going on. They, they control ultimately your reality in a way, which is a very dangerous and scary thing. Um, but anyway, you can search out these different things to find them. I was introduced to this, this idea in medical school by um, a professor, a microbiology professor, who happened to work with the military. And she showed us electron microscopy pictures of a neurotoxin from an evolved bacteria. And I almost fell over, our whole class did, because it was a robotic structure that was tinier than a cell. And that was beyond our comprehension because we didn't have cell phones back then. And I didn't even know how to really process that until recently. But, and so now if you look and there's different video clips, you'll see uh, people talk about DNA nanobots. Pfizer has bought into it. They work with nanobots and how they can go in and they can assemble and disassemble and reassemble. They carry payloads. They can do all kinds of things. And uh, Boris Johnson has said in the near future, all of us will have nanobots that they will be an armada, he says, inside of our body and they can fix a broken tendon or look at a tumor and kill it immediately. That sounds great. But then he also said in the same breath that no thought will ever be private anymore because these nanobots will also be accumulating data in some form and that they'll be transmitting that data to a central server, a supercomputer and everything will be known, every thought, every emotion forever, that you can't hide, you won't have privacy. And he even said that because it's this two-way communication that you know even your Alexa can give you commands. This is, the, people really are talking about this. So here we are, we have some technology that could be used for good. You know, yeah, we could repair things in the body, beautiful. But in the same breath, that person says, but we have a plan to use it for other things too surveillance, loss of privacy, control. And he's not the only one. Many times I went to meetings where this was talked about for using this that could be used for good for the, uh, for the enjoyment or the power of a small group of people. So this is why we have to educate ourselves and understand who's behind these agendas, what their motive is, and then understand about these technologies themselves. Right this very moment, I believe that we are in the ultimate battle of all battles. And we're looking at, in the last 10 years, rapidly we went from a 
medicine that was trying to do good for humanity to a very dark medicine and science. It's very dark right now, so you, you can't trust the same people, you can't trust the same industry like you did 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's totally different. Wake up and realize that. So it is dark against light in my opinion, a battle of good versus evil, if you're looking at it the most simplified way. And it's scary, you know? because this is the thing people read about in the, in the Bible. But you have to understand that all that technology, all that knowledge doesn't come with wisdom that they're using it for. And it's on a very low energy, it goes with fear. So it's a low energy. This all comes down to energy. So that's why I love what Jesus Christ taught because he taught us that the heart, the love is powerful, the most powerful thing. It really is, even by science, it's proven that. And then I love that he said, you know, hey, don't idolize me in so many words, I'm paraphrasing. You just know that whatever I can do, you can do, but greater things than me, you can do. And I think that he was speaking that for this very moment in time to get us to remember that we are spiritual beings, not just physical beings. We have a light inside of us, a power and energy that is measurable and, and amazing. And it's a high frequency, the highest. So much more powerful, much more light than all of that technology that you're hearing about that I just said. So that means we have the power inside of us. We just have to remember who we are and wake up. And that goes, if you wanna know how to tap into that, well, do everything they're telling you not to do. So they're telling you to stay away from each other six feet. Don't do that. Hug and kiss. We know by science that increases your immune system, makes you happier. Um, be outside, exercise, be in the sunlight, sing, dance, pray, worship, cook together, uh, be in you know, larger groups of people together. You do everything they tell you not to do because that's what the people in power with this agenda are afraid of. They're afraid of us coming together you know, getting that joy and that love back and that, that community back and caring for one another back because with that, we are unstoppable and we can then take back our world from these people that have an, an, a negative, evil, dark agenda and make it the paradise it was always supposed to be.